This is the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime TV, the longest running pro wrestling news program in the world, with your hosts, David Hero and Damian Nelson. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime oh, Saturday night. We're starting. Sorry. Damian Nelson sitting here alongside David Octavius Tiberius, the alleged backyard, one ton, knockout, straight edge, hardcore, Hall of Famer hero. And how are you here on it's, Saturday the 14th? It's Slammiversary weekend. It is Slammiversary weekend, and we're going to be talking about TNA Slammiversary later on in this very broadcast. But before we do that, let's get to this week's big story, ladies and gentlemen. And wow, it's a doozy. Is it like huge, big, or it's just a big story? Big, big? graphic filled up the whole screen. It was big. Last Monday on WWE Raw, the Authority announced that they have stripped Daniel Bryan of the WWE Championship as he has not been cleared to return for the Money in the Bank pay per view event in July. This comes off the heels of the announcement last week that Brian would defend the title against Kane if he had been cleared to compete. This is the end of a very long and bumpy road for Daniel Bryan, who won the championship at WrestleMania 30 under much fanfare and confetti. This win occurred at the that same event. That was a lot of confetti in New Orleans, wasn't it? This event occurred at the same event that the Undertaker streak was ended, two days before the Ultimate Warrior died, a week before Daniel Bryan's father unexpectedly passed away, and all that was followed by a neck surgery that is keeping Daniel Bryan on the shelf longer. Do you know what the common denominator is in all that stuff? What's that? Is he got married. It almost seems like Bryan's title win was cursed from the start. However, WWE's treatment of the situation has been very telling. They have tried their best to keep Daniel Bryan in the spotlight by addressing the situation each and every week, and they certainly could have stripped him of the title earlier, but they did not. They have let the Yes Movement movement play out, and unfortunately has done just that, play out. Now, I for one feel that Bryan will continue to be a major part of WWE going forward, but I wonder in what capacity. It's already been announced that the Money in the Bank ladder match will now be for the WWE Championship with Randy Orton, Sheamus, Bray Wyatt, Cesaro, and Alberto Del Rio qualifying for the match. Now, could Daniel Bryan return and take his championship back at Money in the Bank? And if he does, where does it go from there? Lots of questions, David. Firstly being Daniel Bryan stripped of the championship. WWE left with, in their mind, no choice. They had to do it. Now they just made Money in the Bank that much of a bigger event by now having the MITB match for the biggest prize in all of wrestling. You know, everyone is talking about poor Daniel Bryan. Let's not forget Kane is really getting screwed in this whole deal. Because yeah. he was supposed to be getting a title shot. Kane should automatically go into the Money in the Bank match. He should, shouldn't he? Absolutely. If you can put in Randy Orton in, who's been, you know, in a program with the Shield, you put Kane, you put ADR back in there. Right. And who did he beat to get in there? Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler. Yeah. So what does that tell you about Dolph Ziggler? But that's a different. What, what does it tell you about Dolph Ziggler? It means he, that he's endorsed. He's perfection. He's one of the best talents in the wrestling business right now. And he could be one of the next ten. Right. He could be. Well, that would set the internet ablaze if Dolph Ziggler was released from WWE. He won't However, be. how do you think Dolph Ziggler would feel about being released from WWE? I think he'd be heartbroken because who wants to be released? I mean, yeah. but I'm sure he would do very well in the indies. I'm sure TNA would grab him and throw Eesh. some ridiculous amount of money at him. I hate that being the default. TNA. Well, that's all you got. There's Ring of Honor. Dolph Ziggler would not fit in Ring of Honor. I really don't think he would. Unless he went there with Matt Hardy and became icons. But... You know. Danny Bryan, is the Yes Movement dead? Has it played out? It's on, it is definitely come to a screeching halt. It's not dead. I think that the Yes Movement is going to be stalled until SummerSlam when Daniel Bryan comes back. You think it's that long? Probably, huh? Uh, can't make July. You know what? If he's not going to make it this month for the pay-per-view, or the next one, Money in the Bank, it's going to have to be SummerSlam. No reason to rush him back, but SummerSlam is the number two pay-per-view of the year. Mm. In their mind. I uh, think it's actually the Royal Rumble, but... No. Well, that's so, your... does he get involved in the Money in the Bank matchup? No. Does he somehow or another work his way into that event? He's a babyface. He needs to stay out of that match. Isn't that a great way to reintroduce him, though? Wait, he never lost. That's his title. He comes out somehow or another, maybe screws someone, or... Someone no. another walks out the champion. If he can't compete, they're not going to put him in a situation where he might take a bad bump and hurt his neck. 
But this is assuming he's cleared at that point. At Money in the Bank? Yeah. He won't be cleared. He could be. Impossible. They don't think he will be. He won't be. There's no. You don't. Are you that. saying he's a B plus player because he can't heal himself like the A plus players can, as Stephanie said last week on? No, her? I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying if the guy is hurt, let him be 100 percent healed up. You know what it reminds me? I was talking to my good, close personal friend Jim Lombardo from Bell Ambulance. You know, and guess who was asking about you? Who that? Nobody. <laughs> But, no, I mean, Daniel Bryan's going to be just fine. He'll come back at SummerSlam. He'll get the belt back then. And all will be good in the world of wrestling. Trust me. I know this stuff. I have been DWHing the whole Daniel Bryan Yes Movement thing since Royal Rumble. Where have I been wrong? I haven't. Every corner, around every turn. I don't do corners. You cut them, absolutely. And I've been right. Every corner That's I've it. cut. For this week's big story, ladies and gentlemen, still to come here on Primetime this week, we've got uh, the WWE Report, which in case you didn't check it out on Feedback Friday Online yesterday, 10 names, 10 people released from WWE earlier this week. We'll share that with you. We've got Diamond of the Ring, Hot News, the Event Center with Linda Kay, and we take a preview of Slammiversary, which is tomorrow night on Pay Per View. We'll be right back after these short messages. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report. Primetime Saturday night for Saturday, June 14th, 2014. I'm glad to see, David Hero, that you survived Friday the 13th yesterday. It Even was after rough. your malicious comments against uh, uh, CM Punk on Feedback Friday online Well, yesterday. it was not against It was about the CM Punk fans. You said it was a small-minded individual and human being. I said about Punk? Yeah. That made the air? Mm-hmm. Whoops. Always assume your mic is hot. It's the only well, thing hot you about You stole it. these things? <laughs> All makes sense now. I knew it. Let's go to this week's WWE report, ladies and gentlemen. Before we get to the happenings in WWE on television this week, let's talk about some big news released Thursday by the company online at WWE.com. They've come to terms on the release of 10 different talents, ladies and gentlemen. 10 people gone from WWE. Some of them may come as a surprise to you. Others probably will not. Firstly, two members of 3MB are gone. Drew McIntyre and Jinder Mahal released. Oksana released. Brodus Clay released. Teddy Long gone. See what I did there? Teddy Long gone. Oh, that's Kurt Hawkins funny. released. Camacho released. Yoshitatsu, referee Mark Harris, oh, and wait, Evan wait, wait, Bourne wait, wait, wait. all gonna, released. If you're going to be cute and funny, then Tatsu should be Sayonara, right? Not, why? Isn't, doesn't that rhyme with Yoshitatsu? Absolutely not. It sounds like it would. All those 10 names released from WWE. Brodus we talked Clay. about this in depth last night Imagine how on that Feedback call went. Friday at our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so you can go and check out our comments there on those releases by WWE. But how about what happened on Raw this past Monday night and SmackDown last night? And even main event midweek this week, David Hero. Seth Rollins, The Shield, Triple H taking center stage over all the happenings in WWE, it seemed. And I was most intrigued by the fact that it was a clear targeting by Roman Reigns to one Triple H. Oh, he wants him. And right now, you got to figure that Roman Reigns and Triple H will have their one on one match at SummerSlam. The big slam of the summer? I think so. That's a money and, match. You know, I don't. Listen, I'm not. I like Roman Reigns. I think of the three, cosmetically, he's the biggest star. I don't know if Roman Reigns is ready for a one on one match with Triple H. Why not? <sighs> Why not? Triple H is a different, it's a different breed of, of performer. As our Triple H and Daniel Bryan, they had a great match at WrestleMania. They did, absolutely. So what's the difference? There's a big difference because Daniel Bryan is a guy that creates motion. He flies all around the ring. And Roman Reigns? He's a bigger dude. 
And but Roman Reigns I've is, heard people say he's not really that big. He's not that big, but he's programmed but he's, for tag team matches. Even though he's worked as a singles competitor, including in NXT. But for the last two years, he's been a tag team guy. He's had several singles I'm matches. just saying it's Triple H. So you hate Roman Reigns now? No, I don't hate Roman Reigns. It's Triple H, which means if anything, much like any good veteran, they can make a good match out of it, even if all the ingredients aren't there. Which you can easily Agreed. argue, just due to the lack okay, of time or the Damian, short amount of time he's had in the business, Damian, that those ingredients Roman are. Roman Reigns is going to have a headlining match with his boss at SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. Talk about an evaluation, or as the Kaz would say, it's a temperature check. I think the temperature's been checked on Roman Reigns already, and it's hot. It'll be interesting. I, I'm just saying. Should they not do this match? Then? Should no, that not no, be where they're going? If, if, if they're going to make Roman Reigns into a singles star, he absolutely has to have a match with Triple H. But it's a shame that it has to be with Triple H. That means there's a very select few guys that can make Roman Reigns a main event A-plus player. He's wrestled Orton, not in a marquee match, but on but, Raw a couple of times. Should Orton, it be Orton? No. Orton's not Triple H. There's two guys that can make Roman Reigns. Who that? John Cena. Cody Rhodes. And Triple H. That's it. Those are the only two guys that can make Roman Reigns. How about Seth Rollins? He speaks in a sit-down interview in a seat, suit with Michael Cole, then he speaks again on main event mm -hmm. in the ring with Triple H. He likes to talk. Well, he had to, he had to explain himself, if you will. Mm -hmm. Did he explain himself? I think, well, you know, if you listen to him, he's the guy who created the shield, and uh, he, is, he was the catalyst behind everything that they did right. And uh, he evolved. My favorite part, though, was what he said when they started chanting, you sold out. He said, no, I bought in to Seth Rollins. Yeah. I hope right now it works for Seth Rollins. We'll see what happens six months from now. Who do you like in wrestling? I didn't like the fact they broke the shield up. Really? You're hanging on that. Bro, we sat there and we had dinner in Chicago with people that know, uh -huh. and you heard me say, don't break them up. Don't break up the shield. You didn't break up the four horsemen. Let them let them go. There were 20 people who were horsemen over Not the course really, of that time, but it was so it always, didn't break up. It was always Flair, Arn, Tully. No, it wasn't always Flair, Arn, Tully. Sometimes it you was threw Steve Mongo McMichael for a that while. That was watered down nonsense. But it was still the horsemen. But still. The so shield, the shield should be kept together with Jinder Mahal, Drew McIntyre, and Yoshitatsu, is what you're saying. Well, no, that'd be five guys. You're going to have three. No, those three representing the shield. No, because, no. Put the flag jackets on them and everything's fine. I've heard you say that. Well, the flag jackets hide, in, hide imperfections. You're saying Roman Reigns isn't perfect? No, Kurt Henning was. It's a big difference. <laughs> I just, I, I don't like the fact they broke the shield up. I, th I still think it's a big mistake. I think they're going to lose money because of it. You're actually pouting. You're pouting right now. No, I'm just You're saying, pouting. You are pouting. No, because it's people like you. That say, oh, you don't like... Uh, what do you shield. mean, Mr. Perot? You don't like Roman Reigns. No, it's not that. I think he's a... Ta when the shield first happened, who was the guy that said Roman Reigns is the star? Me. I did. Right away. Don't labar me. I did. Okay? Big difference. I said Roman Reigns has the look, he has the size, he has the charisma. Other two guys can fall in behind him. Reigns is a star. But I just think the shield as a unit means more, means more money. I don't like the fact that they're being split up. Whenever you split up a faction, things go bad. Because right now, all three guys in the Shield were on equal footing. Now it's Reigns here, and then Ambrose is down a couple notches. But you, you've also said that cosmetically, Roman Reigns is a star. Cosmetically, yes. Is it then not the responsibility of World Wrestling Entertainment to make him that star? They don't have much to work with. They're, the roster's too thin. And then you cut off 10 talents that weren't selling tickets. Then you bring up all these young kids from NXT that it's a coin flip on most of them. And they are kids. They're in their 20s, early 20s. Well, they're the same age as me. I mean, Bo Dallas has not gotten over age. the way everyone thought he would. You don't believe? No, I don't believe. Looks like he's in a wet t-shirt contest every week. Okay? Then Maybe you got Adam Rose. He ain't getting over. At all. I don't care what anybody says. He may have a great theme song. That's it. Summer Rae's one of the, one of the uh, Rosebuds, at least she was I last night on SmackDown. That's a good thing. I don't see anyone in the front row with a lollipop in their mouth. Well, I mean, that would be inappropriate. Not really. 
Sometimes you like that stuff. Get the guy over. You know, I'm right. You at keep the end telling of the day, yourself that, I'm and right. I'm sure you're going to continue to think it. Yeah, because I'm not, I know I am. I can't wait till after SummerSlam when you say Daniel Bryan gets his championship back and Roman Reigns fumbles with Triple H in the ring. I didn't say he's going to fumble. You essentially implied I, such I things. just said I, it's not fair to Roman Reigns. What about Flair? It's always fair to Flair. But what about Flair? I hope he doesn't come back ever. <laughs> I never want to see him around a ring. Do you? He, yes, I do. Why? Why not? Because he, he's a special attraction. He is a special attraction. So I don't want to watch him drop elbow drops on his sport coat anymore. That's this week's WWE report, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for playing along at home. Along, and I understand. Well, I do not play along at home. Their heads are spinning right now. But let's talk about uh, another online series, ladies and gentlemen, that you can check out from the Pro Wrestling Report all summer long. It's called The Greatest Ever, where we take a look at the greatest in several categories. And this past Wednesday, we took a look at the greatest play-by-play -play man ever, with the finalists being Vince McMahon, Gorilla Monsoon, you got Tony Joey Prince. Styles. Jim Ross and Gordon Soley. And with such a spectacular list, it's very difficult to get to the greatest ever, but the man named the greatest play-by-play -play man ever, the history of the business, was none other Forever, ever? than good old JR, Jim Ross. Miss Jackson was not part of the finalists. Our sure. lists are always controversial. This one was no different, so check out our online edition of PWR Hashtag Feedback Friday from just yesterday to hear what a lot of you had to say about that choice. And David Hero coming up this Wednesday, we will have an all-new edition looking at the greatest gimmick match ever. So be sure to tune in to this online special Wednesday on our YouTube channel. How about that? Can I do my segment now? Greatest gimmick match? No, you are the greatest gimmick match of all time. Thank you you and Kevin Thorne, that. Blizzard Brawl. The wedgie from hell? Yeah, I beat Kevin Thorne. It still terrifies me. Let's go to this week's Diamond of the Ring, ladies and gentlemen. This week's Robert Hack Diamonds of the Ring. Yes, I said diamonds. I'm going to give love to the local Milwaukee independent wrestling scene. The Rosebuds, Dysfunction, Melanie Cruz, and Super Mario all made appearances and on WWE Ray. programming. I'm sorry? Summer Reavers Rosebuds. And Scarlett Boudreaux. Good God Almighty. I mean, there was a lot of Milwaukee talent as Rosebuds this week. They, are, I think, were far more over than Adam Rose themselves. So this week's Robert Hack Diamonds of the Ring, the Milwaukee area Rosebuds. Still to come, ladies and gentlemen, here on PWR Primetime Saturday night, we've got this week's hot news, uh, the local event center with Linda K, DWHS, and also we take Linda's a look at here. tomorrow's Slammiversary pay-per-view from TNA Impact Wrestling. All that coming up after the break here on Primetime. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, the insurance company may try to stop you from getting what's fair. After my car wreck, the insurance company tried to stop me from getting what was fair. I called Gruber Law Offices. Be careful. Call us right away. They better be careful. Now I've got Gruber Law Offices. Call us. Let us get started on your case right now. They green-lighted my case and got me $100,000. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Call 276-6666. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime Saturday Night. Damian Nelson sitting alongside with David Hero. And it is time now for this week's Hot News, which is brought to you by Celia Core, featuring products that maximize every trading session, helping you get the gains you're looking for faster than a speeding bullet. You got some kind of problem? What are you looking at me all crazy for? You. Over there? I, it's impressive, your Celia Core. Uh, the National Wrestling Hall of Fame has announced that WWE Hall of Famer Jim Ross will be serving as the Master of Ceremonies at this year's event on July 19th. The ceremony will take place at the Dan Gable Museum in Waterloo, Iowa, and will feature Rick Steiner, Scott Steiner, and Wilbur Snyder, Snyder, Snyder. being inducted. He has the pretzels, right? Those pretzel, these pretzels are making me thirsty. Well, I don't have any pretzels. It's and award winners including Diamond Dallas Page. Oh, shoot. One, I, I gotta grab this. Just give me one second here. Frank, got, uh, get, who's getting the Frank Gotch Award? This Larry is Dave. Hennig, Randy Couture. Hey, and baby, Larry how are you? Matissic. Fan, ta tremendous. Uh, yes. I did, what are you? We, I did get the headphones. Th yes. It, headphones? It is very frustrating. Who's that? I, I know, he keeps, he won't, he won't give me the... Anyways, Deadline.com is reporting uh, the, the that Chris Jericho is starring in a new Comedy Central digital series called Team Tiger Awesome. The series is following a loose cannon detective. So next week or two weeks And his by-the-book 
partner. Because I can do this now. Jericho is the loose cannon, while his partner is played by Nick oh, Mundy. fantastic. Who you may know from his All time right. on Conan on TBS. You, good luck do with you the mind? table. Do you mind? Do you mind? Do you mind? Do you mind? I'm finishing up Do here. you mind? Relax. In the call. You can just in. shoot the... I can't just... I can't talk over you. you can Who is it. that? Hang up. Already. So... The heck's more important. Ten days from now. We're good. All That's right, it for this week's hot news, ladies and gentlemen. How rude. You know what? Just all, all you rude. can do is take the camera folks, and just square folks, yourself in this box folks, over here. We always encourage you to check us out at our website to see all that PWR has to offer. But even we admit that the website has needed some work. And uh, you need some work to Your make attitude that task sucks. easier. That's I'm why we are pleased. To call. That's why we are pleased to announce that an all-new version of our site will be launching in the next few weeks. In the interim, we encourage you to check out our YouTube channel for all of our latest offerings while PWRShow.com is being rebuilt from the ground up. We appreciate your patience during this transition, and we are as excited as you are for the new site to launch at the end of this month. It's going to be quite interesting. I can't wait. I hope you, I hope you have the not safe for work stuff off there now, too. Let's go to Linda Kay with this week's Speaking event of, center. Who was that? That's Linda Kay. No, on the phone. Oh, it's a good close personal friend. Welcome to the PWR Event Center brought to you by Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. PWR is pleased to welcome Kevin Nash back to Milwaukee in August for an evening with Kevin Nash. The special event takes place Sunday, August 10th at 7 p.m. at the Miramar Theater located at 2844 North Oakland Avenue. Tickets are available now at blizzardbrawl.com and all tickets include a post-show meet and greet with Big Sexy. This Monday night, meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan at the Lakeshore Chinooks game at 6.30 p.m. at Capco Park in Mequon. Friday night, join Cal Hero for a special GLCW show titled Calapalooza, featuring Armando Estrada and Rosita in Cedarburg. Next Saturday, meet GLCW champion Al Snow at the Nexus Game Convention at the Clarion Hotel Milwaukee Airport. Great Lakes Championship Wrestling invades Six Flags July 4th, 5th, and 6th with six huge shows shows featuring Scotty Too Hottie and GLCW champion Al Snow. Tickets and details of all these events are available now at blizzardbrawl.com. Monday night the Twitterverse was buzzing about who the new member of the Shield was going to be. Who would replace the turncoat? Seth Rollins. The world waited and waited and waited and waited for nobody. The Shield does not need a third member. They are already stars and do not need anyone else. Fans were hoping for another NXT call-up. Why? Without proper build-up or introduction, it would not mean anything. The fans would sit on their hands and be confused. Reigns, Ambrose, and Rollins were built up over two years and cannot be replaced by someone in a week's time. Remember when Paul Roma joined the Four Horsemen? Development of a talent into a star is a process. Hot-shotting someone into a top spot usually does more damage than good. Enjoy the Summer of the Shield. And with that, David Hero has spoken. Hi gang, Mean Gene Okerlund here on My24. And you're watching the Pro Wrestling Report. All of the news about wrestling, not only here in Milwaukee, but throughout the world. Stay up to date. Join us every Saturday night. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report. It's not Report. as bad as you think it is. <laughs> Just tell me who was on the phone. That's all I've been asking. Who was on the phone? I, I don't know. You know what? I ain't nobody got time for that. I'm efforting. Because Andy, I want the studio phone turned off. It shall not ring during the time by which we're broadcasting. Thank you. This is from Bobby Heen. It was time, a gift. ladies and gentlemen, to look at tomorrow's TNA Slammiversary on pay-per-view. And while we don't for sure know what the main event will be comprised of, as MVP is suffering from a knee injury, one he talked about on a recent edition of Chris Jericho's podcast, saying that TNA does have a plan B, but he is slated to go up against Eric Young in the main event to see if he can walk out the new TNA World Heavyweight Didn't Champion. MVP also say he hasn't gotten an MRI done yet also? He did say he has elected not to How does MRI. that happen? You're going to be headlining, main eventing for the TNA Impact World Wrestling Heavyweight Championship match. Of the world. Of the world. In Dallas. Texas. Texas. Fort Worth. And no one knows <laughs> if he can go or not? <laughs> and we're 16 hours away? It's your main event. 
No one knows if no one knew if Daniel Bryan could go or not or not going into payback. Okay, here's the difference. All right, the roster on WWE is a little bit more established. Just a little bit. And all right, so let's say MVP is in this matchup, and it is he versus Eric Young for the championship. How would you make it go down, David Hero? This match has got to be. He's not going to be 100. percent There's no way MVP yeah, is ready point. to go. Um, you got to figure there'd be a lot of shenanigans. If MVP now is the director of talent operations and all the other nonsense he has, he can create this match to go however he wants it to go. He can have Kenny King at ringside. He can have Bobby Lashley come down. They're busy as well. Nonsense. Doesn't make a, one bit of difference. I fully expect MVP to throw everything at, at, at EY, at Eric Young, tomorrow night. Shenanigans, nonstop, everything, and MVP walks out the new Teen Impact I World Heavyweight thought Champion. You were going to say that, unfortunately. And it's a shame. It is because let EY let EY run with it, and they're not going to. But they're the, the uncertainty now, let's surrounding not forget, MVP. Though, why Impact, would they make him the champion? Bobby Lashley beat Eric Young clean on Impact. Well, so, he had two matches, did Eric Young, on Impact. I understand that, but if MVP can't go, I expect Bobby Lashley to take a spot. Then it might be different. But I still think MVP... Look alike. I didn't say that. There's rumors of that, but I didn't say that. But I honestly believe MVP leaves. MVP. <laughs> the TNA <laughs> Impact World Heavyweight <laughs> Champion. <laughs> Ethan Carter the third, EC3. He wants a Texas death match, and he's got one with Bully Ray tomorrow night. This uh, should be interesting. And I didn't realize Bully Ray was back with uh, Miss Tessmacher. Well, she's from Texas. She is from Texas. It makes yes. sense. She won the championship in Texas. Yes. That's the anniversary um, of this year. Was it Bound for Glory? Some event. And you know, we're EC3 fans. Absolutely. We like EC3. I'll let, when they first said who EC3 was, I was like, oh, my God, this kid's not going to get over. Couldn't get over on, on NXT. He's done an amazing job. I really believe EC3 needs to beat Bully Ray. He does. He really does. He truly does. Let that streak keep. Bully Ray is already an established star. Bully Ray defeating EC3 in a Texas death match doesn't do anything for either one of them. Now, EC3 somehow gets nonsense, shenanigans. Rockstar Spud gets invo involved. Who Rockstar Spud needs to get involved to get a little bit of heat back on Bully Ray for being his whooping boy. Yeah. Let EC3, I, choose, I would book EC3 to beat Bully Ray. Samoa Joe versus Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley. End of story. And uh, the Von Erics we know are going to be making... Do you know why Bobby well. Lashley needs to win? Why is that? Samoa Joe is a Samoan submission machine. He already has a reputation as being a killer, right? Yes. If Bobby Lashley is the sergeant at arms for MVP, Chief of Staff, that's Kenny King. He has the gimmick in Vegas for that. Lashley has to beat Samoa Joe strong. Austin Aries versus Kenny King. Austin Aries. He's just that good. That tomorrow, he is the greatest man that ever lived. That's what, that's what Angel Armani tells me all the time. Tomorrow night, folks, it's TNA Slammiversary on you for, you forgot You forgot the X Division match. I didn't. There's just too many people in it. That, so you, did, you just can't match. pronounce all the names. That's what it is. That's <laughs> the problem. Start with the champion, Sonata. But let's just say, put it this way. TNA, I'm sorry, poor planning, terrible planning on your part. You have your TNA World Impact Tag Team Champions in an X Division match. <laughs> You mean to tell me you couldn't fi find out? Well, but the Von Eric boys are competing. Why don't you have, at Slammiversary, the tag team titles on the line? Aren't Willow and Abyss a team now, too? Oh, and we got Willow against Magnus. Magnus defeats Willow. He has to. We're out of time, package. folks, tomorrow night. TNA ah. Slammiversary on pay-per-view. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you again Wednesday at... Uh, Kenny Anderson defeats YouTube James channel. Storm, too, by the way. On our YouTube channel for the greatest ever, where we look at the greatest gimmick match ever. Maybe the X Division Championship will fall into that category. Who would have thought we'll TNA would have taken this much time on the show? <laughs>